Hello everybody, this is Tracy Markley from Tracy's Personal Training, Pilates and Yoga again. Today I wanted to answer some questions about back pain, the sciatic nerve, which causes, it's called sciatica pain. Some people even refer to the sciatic nerve as the sciatica nerve. Either way, you have this nerve, it's a sciatic nerve, it causes a lot of issues on people. But also the sciatic nerve is a very important nerve because it helps move and function of your legs and feet. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of knowledge here that may help you help yourself get out of pain. I've had some messages this week about it and I was interacting with someone this morning who has gone to some professionals and no one's able to help them. Sometimes it's what you're going through in your own body and maybe it needs different, it, sometimes people can't get help with their pain. You really want to, but sometimes it's the caregivers or maybe your chiropractor, maybe somebody didn't take care of you the way you needed or maybe they didn't have the knowledge or the massage therapist didn't have the knowledge to help you more. Whatever the case is, you have to go by your own personal situation. Take what I share, take the knowledge I give you because the knowledge of the muscles and where the nerves come out is gonna be the same pretty much for everybody unless you have some, you're born with some deformity and you have something else going on. So, and I know I have spoken to a lot of people who are stroke survivors and also people who aren't and just have back pain. You may have back pain, you don't know why. You have, they may have back pain because you sit down too much. Or maybe you had an accident, maybe you fell, you have a birth defect, whatever. I'm gonna share with you guys what I know to help, if it can help you, and hopefully we'll help you guys some. Okay, so. I always say knowledge is power. I'm gonna share with you guys some anatomy. So first of all, your sciatic nerve comes out from your spinal column to your body between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae. So this is, you can see those are your femur, you know, your leg bones, that's your femur, goes into the ball and socket, into your hip, right through here. There's your sacrum, here's your spine. The last five, the last vertebrae in your spine are the lumbar vertebrae. You have five of them. And it's five, four, three, two, one. The sciatic nerve comes out between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae. Could you see that in there? Okay, so with that, it also comes, comes through. And then you have your glutes. So you, I just showed you the pelvic bone. Now this is the back view. That's your butt muscles. You take off your large butt muscle, and now you have the rotators here, and one of these rotators is your piriformis muscle. The sciatic nerve also comes through the piriformis muscle. So some people, you may have inflammation by their discs, or tight muscles, or uneven muscles around those discs. Maybe one side, you have tight muscles, the other side's loose, so it's pulling, which can put pressure on the sciatic nerve. You can also have something going on in here. So let me go to another picture. I have another real good one I can't find right now. But if you look right here, again, this is just one butt muscle, one side of the leg. There's the sciatic nerve coming through the piriformis and then down the leg. It comes down, it branches off. So you may have tightness or inflammation in this area and or, you know, in here through your low vertebrae, or maybe you have both. So... I'm going to show you, okay, so keep that in mind. You have a muscle called the quadratus laborum, and you also have the, the um, psoas muscle. So your quadratus laborum is right here. See that muscle there? So again, this is the front view. Here's your hip pelvic bone. There's your lumbar vertebrae. There's your rib cage. See how it attaches to those low vertebrae? If you have poor posture, maybe you have a stroke, you might have spasticity, so also you may be pulled a lot to one side, that's gonna make one side short and tight. So you have the vertebrae and one side of it being short and tight, pulling on the vertebrae. That will cause sciatica pain and pain in your spine and hip pain. So what I'm going through today also will refer to a lot of pain and hips that people get. Okay, so there's your quadratus labor, okay? And when we do stretches, like reaching over this way, that helps you stretch it. You can go to the side of the, a wall and kind of hang 
kind of hang out and stretch it. There's ways you can do it. You, I think you cross your feet this way and you cross over. There's different ways to get a stretch, but you have to find the one that works for you safe, safely without hurting something else. Okay, just showed you that one. Now we're gonna go to the psoas muscle. Here's a little teeny version. Whoops, you can see it better here. It's a smaller picture, but if you look real close, again, there's the lumbar vertebrae, there's your pelvic, your, you know, your hip bones, your pelvic girdle. The, the psoas muscle comes down the lumbar vertebrae, crosses through the hip bone, and attaches at that leg. So it comes on the top four of the, so it comes down the top four of the lumbar vertebrae. So the one, two, three, and four. So when I showed you this one, The psoas muscle attaches at the top four, okay? And then the sciatic nerve comes out here. So anything going on with your psoas muscle and or the quadratus laborum, laborum muscle will affect what's going on there. If you don't have, if you have unevenness inside where things are twisting or pulling on your spine, it will affect your hips, the sciatic nerve, and a lot of pain through here numbness in the feet, walking disabilities, foot drag if you're a stroke survivor, all kinds of different things. Also, if that's going on, if you're a stroke survivor and you have a hyperextended knee, fixing this area can help that. I have some videos on that. Okay, let's go back to here. So there is the psoas muscle, okay? That muscle attaches in that low spine, deep at the spine, just like the quadratus suborum, Crosses, so it comes from back here, crosses through on top of that hip bone, and attaches at the leg. It's the only muscle in the spine that attaches to your leg. So that muscle has to do with these movements. If you sit around too long, so if you're, take, you're sitting down a lot, you're making that muscle short and tight. And if you sit down on a twist, you're making it short and tight and uneven. So you need to get your hips even and lengthen that up. The more you sit, the more this muscle is gonna be shorter and tighter and not gonna be mobile for walking because you need that for movement. So when you're sitting a lot and you're here and you go to, even if you don't sit a lot, when you stand up, if you don't complete standing up to take your movements and walking, you're keeping this muscle and other muscles in there in a rounded, unstable position, which is dysfunction. So a lot of people, when they've either had some challenges, pain, and they're a little, you know, timid of moving because they've had pain, or you're a stroke survivor, or you're out of balance, or just poor posture, if you're walking here, it's more free and lined up. If you get up and you stop here to take your steps, you're just keeping constant pressure on the low vertebrae and the nerves that come out from there, including the sciatic nerve. So big tips to help you. Watch your posture. When you sit, don't sit like this and watch TV because basically the more, the more your body's in a specific position, that's the position the body's gonna remember. So if you're like this, like 12 hours a day or eight hours a day, or you're slouching like that, when you get up and you need your body to be upright to move with you, you're probably going to have pain, weakness, and, and being unstable. So watch your posture when you sit, when you sleep. I'll show you some sleeping positions. You know, when you're driving in your car. And I'll give you a tip with the car. So. Years ago, I had a Jeep Wrangler, loved it, but I was constantly having hip pain and I constantly needed to go to the chiropractor and get adjusted. And a chiropractor, not mine, but some chiropractor somewhere, wrote an article that he realized that many females that drove Jeeps were having back and hip issues. So what he found was when you're in your car, you sit in your car, you come closer, you sit in your seat and your pedals usually in front of you. But in the Jeep and often some other cars, maybe your pedals are sideways. 
So you may sit in your chair directly, but your pedals may be slightly to the left or to the right, but I think it's more to the left. So it means you're driving in your car like this instead of like this. So if you find that will cause a lot of back and hip issues in people, I want to say especially women, but it's everybody. It's everybody because you can't be like this and, you know, be slightly shifted because that takes all those muscles I just showed you and all the other muscles you have through your spine and you're making an uneven. So if that's the case, maybe put a pillow in your car to kind of keep your hips steady. Kind of, kind of find a way to make it work for you because you don't want to constantly do things that's irritating something because you may be going to good chiropractors, good massage therapists, good acupuncture. You may have really good care with you, but you're going home and going back into a bad habit. Or maybe you have someone that's not good at their work. You have the good and bad in every business. I'm not putting down anybody, but that's just the fact of it. You know, in every business, there's good workers and there's bad workers. There's ones that don't get enough education to help you. And there's ones that get a whole lot. But if you go home and you're making all these bad habits and they don't know it, it's kind of hard to help you. So say like you're sitting at your desk and you're doing some computer work. Some people, they may have their chair here, but they're turned like this to work on their computer. Well, that's taken that whole spinal area, putting it in a twist for a long time. That's going to cause you pain. If you're sitting and watching TV and maybe your TV's over there, but your couch and chair is here and you're sitting like this, you're now taking your upper vertebrae and twisting it. And if you're twisting your upper vertebrae, vertebrae it will pull on the fascia and the thoracic lumbar fascia and cause imbalances in your spine too. Okay, so remember those things. You have, your, you have all these muscles, you have to keep them lined up. And another tip, a very important tip for you guys, especially if you're someone who has a cane or if you use a walker or just bad habits, because I've been doing this for over 25 years now, probably longer, and 80% um, of my clients, I have to tell them, get your shoulders out of your ears. Get your shoulders out of your ears. Because if you're walking around like this or you're driving your car like that or you watch TV like that or if you sleep and you're like that, you're pulling all the muscles up. It pulls on the fascia. You have muscles that attach right here at your arm, like your big lat muscle. It attaches at your arm. So if you're pulling your shoulders up, you're pulling things that attach to this fascia and affect the low back. It affects your hips. So you need to be in good posture, shoulders down, have that space between your ears, Anytime you're lifting your shoulders up, you're throwing your rotator cuffs out of alignment, your shoulder joint, your ribs, your diaphragm, because when you lift this up, this comes up. So, so here's a good test for you. If, you have, if you're fortunate enough to have someone with you, it may be easier because you can put your hands on their back or on their shoulders or maybe put your hands here and have them lift their shoulders up. Have them just do different movements with their arms. Or maybe, you know, have them twist to their hip to one side. And you can just feel what changes is going on. I, when I work with stroke survivors for arm recovery, I've asked them to find someone to put their unaffected hand on their back by their shoulder blade and then have someone take their arm through all the different ranges of motion that the shoulder does because and you, that, and you will feel the shoulder blade moves all over, which it also all the muscles attached to the shoulder blade will take movement too. So try that. That will help you have a little more awareness and it will help you understand. You will feel what's happening in some of those muscles and joints as you lift things up or if you're in this in bad position. So you will know that you're holding yourself in that bad position in different ways. So there's some tips right there. Sleeping. Okay, here's another really good tip for sleeping. And, and to give you a little more knowledge about me, some of you guys know me, you've watched my videos, you've read my book. Um, I have a book just on spine, The Power of Your Spine, how back strength and posture pilots your entire body. It is true. So just you know, remember, this, you can't walk. This, you have movement to walk. Okay. 
with sleeping. Oh, let me go back for a second. So I've done this for several years and yeah, you know, constantly learning. When I knew five years ago, if I look back and go, wow, I didn't know anything, but there's just so much to learn all the time. What I'm telling you now, I'm gonna look back next year and go, wow, I should have told them this too, because I'll probably learn more in the next months because that's this life. If you're open to it, you learn a lot. Okay, I've had scoliosis my whole life. So, which means the curvature of the spine. As I've gotten older, because I'm 54 now, I can tell my body genetically is trying to make that curve worse. So I'm constantly doing things to make sure I sleep in a good position, that I'm not sleeping in a position that favors the curve. And I try to sit the best I can and I try to keep my spine aligned by different exercises. And there, and there are a lot of my books and there are my videos. Because I don't want to be older and have a lot of pain. My grandmother when she was 83, there's a picture of her where her, she's right here, but her upper body was over here. So she's like, her hips are here, her upper body was over here. And I just remember always saying, I don't want to be that way. I don't want that to be that way. But I can tell genetically, because it's a genetic thing in, a, in our family, that my body wants to do that. So I'm working against it. I'm trying to exercise. I stand on both two balls. I do the exercises that I do for my spine. And I really watch how I sit and sleep because that's huge so let's give you a tip on sitting first okay and if you watch my other videos or see my book you will understand that how I've shared this before you want to sit in chairs that do not drop your butt below your hips you want to be even or your hips higher for instance this chair right here is a typical folding chair. I'm a little over 5'7". When I sit, my knees are higher. It makes my hips kind of ache and it's not comfortable in my back. So I take a pad, which is, this is good for balancing and exercises, is the balance pad. I stick it in the chair and I keep my hips a little higher. That takes the pressure off here. When your hips drop below your knees when you sit, it puts a lot of pressure right here. And what's right there? Where the sciatic nerve comes out of your spine. And that's also taking that psoas muscle I told you about. And then instead of just sitting like this, you're literally taking it and dropping it below. And that makes that short and tight. And for a lot of people that have, you know, um, maybe you're a senior, you're having balance issues, you can't get out of chairs very well, or you've gone through something, you're just in pain, you can't get up. If you're sitting with your hips way below your knees, or just a little bit, it's going to be harder to get up because that muscle is even tighter and you're not connecting to things. So if you sit with your hips higher, you can get up and down easier. You can even take two if you want. And it's just even easier there. So when I sit at my computer... I have one of these pads in my computer chair and one of those pads made for sitting. It has a little cut out in the back and it's made for sitting. And I do my computer work there. I cannot sit in a chair with my hips way low or even even for me because my hips and back will hurt. So you have to take care of things wherever you go. Sitting in couches where you just sink in them is just making this part of your body it's making this sink way down. It's making so this is here with the muscles. So all the muscles in there are going down to short and tight mode. And that makes it that's hard on your vertebrae, that's hard on your fascia, and that's hard on movement. You need to you need to keep this open as much as you can. So when you're sitting, don't sit so your those muscles are squished up in here. Get in a good position. It will help you. And, okay, when you sleep, let me give you a couple of good tips here. And hopefully you can see me in the mat. I'm going to bring it out here. I brought my pillow down. Okay, so, when you're sleeping, we're sleeping on our sides. What happens? Your hips kind of sink. So if you're sleeping on your side, your hips kind of come in, so you're not lined up, okay? 
And so putting a pillow between your knees is very helpful. I like the big body pillows. And just wrap your legs and sleep in here. And you're keeping your spine aligned when you sleep. And you're keeping it in the position you want it to be in for function for everyday life. Plus you're taking the, the pressure off those vertebrae because you get pressure on those vertebrae when you sleep like that. Let's get this out of the way now. Okay. Another thing, this probably could be more for females, but it could be for anybody. Right, you know, we have our, you know, our glass figures. We come in here, and it doesn't matter what, you know, how much you weigh, we're usually a little more curvy. Guys are a little more straight up and down. So hip pain and spine pain can really be helped with a little pillow just like this. You can get them on Amazon. They're, what did you, you Google like or uh, search side sleeping pillows, back pain pillows, you will find these. So when you're laying down, instead of being aligned, this goes down. So when you're sleeping, instead of being lined up, you're kind of sleeping in this position. That puts pressure on the low spine and the hip. But if you're sleeping, I always have a pillow between my knees though. Take this pillow and put it in your, your little opening for your hourglass figure. That takes pressure off your hip and your low spine. It's really, so if you see my spine right there, then you see it without it, I drop down. It's not a big movement, but that movement makes the difference of this to that when I'm sleeping. Big difference. So... This, I bought this two years ago, has been the most amazing thing and helped me so much. And it helps me with my scoliosis fight too because I'm not letting my body fall into my scoliosis curve. I'm trying to keep it lined up and straight, which also means all these muscles I've been showing you and others can become more even because you're not sleeping with them shorter. So when this side falls over here, one side is now short and tight which means when I want to go walk or get up in everyday life, here's my low vertebrae, like in this here, this one's pulling on your vertebrae, causing issues, pressure, bulging disc, whatever's going on to happen. So yes, your bed will be filled with pillows, but you can get yourself out of pain. Now, these tips may not help everybody, but it helps a lot of people. I, I was in California visiting a girlfriend I grew up with during the summer, and she was talking about her hip pain. And of course, you know, we're 54, and everybody's at different ages, but it is just kind of as we get older, things want to hurt more. But if we work against it and adjust with pillows and things, you can get a lot of it to go away. So she went home and got a pillow, and she was, oh my God, my hip didn't hurt all night. Because I was going through that years ago, too. I would wake up with my hips hurting. Then I started adjusting to this better because I always did the pillows between the knees, but then I found that one. So when I sleep, I keep this straight. Even if it's just slightly, just a slight can pull on. Remember, you have fascia throughout your body. So I talk about it in a few of my books, working through the fascia lines. If you Google or go to my, get my books, I'd love you to get my books, of course. If you study the working through the fascia lines, the fascia lines in the body, you will see how raising your shoulders up all the time will cause hip pain, ankle issues, and back pain, all kinds of issues because everything's so connected. Okay, so I hope that knowledge has helped you a lot. Know what your vertebrae are doing, sitting, sleeping, standing. If you stand like this all the time, what are you doing? You're taking that area where the sciatic and nerve comes in and you're standing like that you're standing like this so watch your positioning and watch your feet so if you can see my feet and watch my hips when my foot turns look what happens right here the hip turns so the hip turns out now it's uneven at your low spine so if you're standing and you have one foot out here you are now misaligned so try to keep your feet doing the same thing. I like to say to have people have their toes pointed forward, but I know how some some people, you know, automatically walk with their feet turned out. It's just how your spine was since a kid, so don't try to shove it straight. 
find what your natural position is and make both feet do the same thing. If you're coming from a stroke and you're trying to fix um, dropped foot or your foot drag or the heavy leg and you're just doing foot exercises, it's not going to fix it. You need to fix it from up here. So when you watch this, the turning of this comes from here. So if you're sitting on the couch and you're sitting like that, you are coming from up here. So remember where movements come from. That's why in my videos, my books, I try to educate you guys the best I can because the more you know about your body, the more you can probably help heal it and help it from not getting more, more pain and more damage and more dysfunction. Another tip. Okay, I talked about don't squeeze your shoulders and your ears. Don't lift them up. Don't be like this all the time. Do not squeeze your butt. A lot of people will engage their abs, but when they engage your abs, they squeeze your butt. Well, if you squeeze your butt, you don't have any movement. Squeezing your butt to walk, to stand, to do everyday activities will cause and encourage malfunction and pain. Yes, while you're doing certain exercises, you may engage your glutes and do certain exercises, but you don't squeeze your butt to walk. But when somebody has had injury, pain, balance issues, they almost feel safer to kind of squeeze their butt and walk like that. But you're not going to get past that if you don't start training your body not to do that. So I know some, I guess I'll say therapists and professionals, that they will encourage the saying, tuck the butt. Well, you don't want to tuck your butt. You don't need to tuck your butt or squeeze your butt as you're doing things. What you want is to line up your body. So they may be saying, tuck your butt, but they may be saying, just get your pelvic in a neutral position. So you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be tucked under. Find your neutral position where you're just neutral. Don't squeeze and tuck. Don't arch your back and stick it out. Just be neutral. Neutral spine is what you need to have in most of the things. Unless you're doing some specific exercise or some specific therapy thing, maybe you have to do certain things in that. But I don't really like the phrase, tuck your butt, because that doesn't make people connect to pelvic alignment. That makes them want to squeeze their bun and tuck. And you don't squeeze your butt to walk. That will cause your spine muscles to try to do the work that the glutes aren't doing right, and it throws your system off, and you need your system to work properly. And it is a scientific fact that if your body's in proper position and posture, the systems in the body work better. That means also the fascia system, the fascia that goes through your body. If you're here, things aren't going to work as well. If you're squeezing and doing that, things aren't going to work that well. So proper posture when you sit, sleep, walk, stand, will help a lot of you what you're going through. So, but I know if you're in massive pain, or a lot going on that trying to get there may hurt you right now. So you've got to go your own pace, follow your doctor's character good and everybody you're getting, but know these tips and your everyday habits because if you're going home and doing something in your home or in your car or in your sleep that is going against what the professionals you're working with are trying to help you, you can sometimes think your professionals aren't doing a good job. They may not, but they may be doing a good job, but you're going home and doing something that's encouraging what they're trying to fix. You're doing the opposite. And that means hip, spine, feet position, Keep yourself in check. Know what your body's doing in space, head to toe. Okay, with that, so I showed you those. I showed you some sleep positions. I'm going to give you a couple stretches if your body can do it. I know some angles, if you've had hip replacements and things, you may not be able to turn your legs. But a good stretch that can help sciatica pain, I'll show you a few of them. One is sitting in a chair. Okay, sitting up tall. Again, you're not slouched. Your feet are under your knees, so you're not tucked in here, you're not out here. You're going to sit with your feet this way. Knees, ankles under your knees, sitting up tall. So I'm going to face you so you can see what I'm doing. Gonna, so I always say this is sitting like a girl and this is sitting like a guy. So whatever works for you, that's how I've always referred to, to people. Cross your leg here, 
See my bottom leg? It's not over here. It's here. Knee and ankle lined up. Don't take yourself in a twist because watch what happens to my hips. Keep it. Hips steady. Bring it here. Now you may be way up here. Don't compare yourself to my angle. Go yours. First of all, just sitting up tall, you may feel a stretch in your hips. Turn sideways with it. I try to tell people don't do this. Just gauge your abs maybe slightly. Do not squeeze your butt. And gently lean forward from your hips. So you're hinging at your hips as you're sitting. You're not squishing. You're hinging at your hips. So sitting here. Hinge at your hips. Hold it maybe 20 to 30 counts. Depends on you. I try to tell you to keep your hands touching something so you're not doing unsupported spine. So you don't just hang in the air. Support yourself. Relax your shoulders. Just let your natural body weight add to the stretch a little bit. Okay. Depending on you. So I always have people go forward. Shoulders are out of my ears. Don't do this. Relax and just let your hands gently do it. I sometimes have people turn slightly and lean towards their hip. I mean towards their knee. Go forward. You can maybe go towards your foot. But still, even when I'm going to my sides, I'm going from my hips. I'm not going like that. Okay, so there's a couple that can help you. If you're able, you can lift your leg up here and sit up tall. Again, shoulders out of your ears. This gives you a little bit of a stretch. Depends on your body. Some people can do both. Some people can just do one. You also want to make sure your hamstrings are stretched out by just slightly leaning forward. I have people do it. I don't know if you can see my feet. Toes are up. Let me go back a little more. Toes are up towards me. I lean forward. Again, hinging at the hip. And then I point my toes away and I lean forward. Changes the sensation. Make sure your feet are doing the same thing. Don't have one out here. Line them up with your hips. Have them go forward and have them go back. Don't have one turned out. Watch your feet positions because remember, your foot will control what's happening in your hips. Okay, I'll show you a couple on the floor, which you can do on a bench, on a therapy bench, on your bed if your bed's safe. You may lay on a table. Somewhere where you're safe. You can't go to the floor. Lay on your coffee table, lay on your dining room table, lay on your bed, somewhere where you can safely get up and down and do it without hurting yourself. Okay, so if you lay on the floor, or wherever you're going to lay down, one, you can cross your leg right here, so it's the exact same thing we did in the chair, but you're doing it here. Shoulders out of your ears, gently take this hand and gently push it out a little bit. This gets the, this hits the piriformis really good, but when you're doing this, so when you're doing this, make sure you're not pushing your hips sideways. So make sure you keep your hips aligned. So when you're pushing that leg out, don't let your hips slide on the floor sideways. Keep this anchored as you're pushing. Don't let that happen. That's on all the stretches. Okay, so you can stretch out this way a little bit. Again, 20, count to 20 slow, 30 slow. Whatever works for you. Maybe you can only do 10, 10 counts at first. Do what works for you. You can also pick that leg up and come through here. Or you can push it through here. It depends on you, but this one right here is particularly good for hitting near the piriformis. Okay. If you're able, walk one leg out. Bring this one in. You can hold it in here. I think this one works better. So I, you can either grab your foot here, so you're opening up the psoas and getting this open too. This relieves stuff in the low back if you're able to. If you happen to be on a bed or a bench or something, go towards the edge. And as you're doing this stretch, this leg can hang down a little bit and it really opens this up. I have two videos here on my YouTube channel about stretching the psoas. I do it on, a, uh, on the floor, I do it on, I think, a massage table too doing these different stretches. It really helps. So those work. So, And if you can't like make this leg straight, you can do it here, but try to open that up. You can pull it through here. You can pull it here. Then you want to do it the other side. And I usually tell people, 
Don't just throw your legs up. Be in control of it. Keep this one gently, then lift this up. Don't keep your legs up in here a lot, unsupported, especially with back pain. Be gentle with what you do. Doing stretches in here will help you. This leg needs to be bent, that's fine too, but you don't have to grab your foot. Relax your head and shoulders, shoulders out of yours, and just gently grab here and pull in. You don't have to be like this. That's not going to help you. Also, stretching your, stretching your inner thighs where the psoas muscle attaches, that helps too because you can have tight inner thighs and that will keep your back tight. So you can do this stretch, any version of this one that you can, but still just gently lean forward from your hips. You can push back here. Don't always squish up and feel like you have to grab your feet intensely like they taught us when we were younger everywhere. Okay, so those are some stretches that may help you. So I hope this helps. There's so much more you can learn too. I hope this helps some. So and one more tip too. So I was letting this leg kind of can hang off the bed in that stretch. If you're too tight here, so think of all these muscles really tight. What, what does it do? Pulls me under. Pressure here. So you need this to open up too. So doing what I did there, maybe letting that leg hang off the bed some. If you're able to grab your foot and stretch your quads out, so you want to stretch here. Remember, don't stretch like this. Stretch tall. And use the same foot as your hand. So don't grab this foot like this and cross over because that actually can irritate your knee joint. You want your knee and these muscles to stay lined up as you stretch. So any of those things may help you. If you're unable to do that stretch, here is one possibly you can do if you have control, okay? Because there are some people who can't do this. You, you know, some people grab your pant leg. You go down, grab the pant leg and stand up. Um, or as you're here, a little bit further, come to the front. Remember, safety first. You can take this leg, kind of bring it back some, and lean back a little bit, and that will help open this up. But you, if you need to be by a table or a chair or something, don't hurt something else to help something. So don't do this if you're straining your neck or your shoulders or your back. You have to do things that you're only feeling what you're doing because you don't want to injure something to do something else. So safety first and listen to your body. So I flip my foot under this way and I lean back and I feel a nice deep stretch in here. Nice deep stretch. So whatever works for you, do them all. I like to do them all. I can though, but you do what works for you because it's your body. You know what you've been through. I mean, you may have had a hip replacement. You may have had a car accident when you were a kid. You may have something going on with your body that's different than somebody else watching this video. So know your body, know what works for you, but also learn what, you know, what I've taught here. The common things with everybody's body, where your muscles are and how they attach, because that will make sense to you. So for instance, if a therapist is giving you exercises, you'll go, oh, that makes sense. Also, if you know your muscles, and maybe the therapist isn't, can't, they don't always have the time, they may not have the knowledge, but they may have the knowledge, but they don't, they're not given this time to teach you this stuff. If you have this knowledge and you're working with your therapist, you may go, so is that half of my quadratus laborum? Do you think my quadratus laborum is too tight on one side? Which would be this one, or your psoas. The more you know, the more you can interact with your acupuncturist, your massage therapist, your chiropractors, whoever you're, you're working with, physical therapist, because if they know you have the knowledge, they're going, oh yeah, yeah, do this. So the better you know your body, the better you can help yourself, if that makes sense. So again, just to let you know, I am Tracy Markley from Tracy's Personal Training, Pilates and Yoga. My website is tracymarkley.com, T-R-A-C-Y-M-A-R-K-L-E-Y.com or tracyspersonaltraining.com. There's no E in my first name, T-R-A-C-Y. So I'm easily found throughout the internet. If you look through the YouTube channel, you'll see my connections too. But I, ha I am an author of some books, many of them on stroke recovery, but I also have one, The Power of Your Spine, How Back Strength and Posture Cut Its Entire Body. That's the book right there.
this book is actually really good for anybody walking issues balance issues sciatic issues but it is called stroke recovery legs to building walking gait there's that book there that just came out a couple months ago there's one just on arm movement and upper body movement and um tipping towards balance is a stability walking book i have a couple other ones on stroke recovery too and a one on the brain that just came out I don't even have a copy of it yet. I'm waiting for it, but that's my brain book. Really easy book. Most of my books, all my books are an easy size, larger print. They all have a chapter in anatomy and exercises in them. So I hope this helps you. Again, I'm Tracy Markley, Tracy L. Markley, Tracy Markley from Tracy's Personal Training Pilates and Yoga. And you have my website. You have my, you're on my YouTube channel probably right now, or you're on my Instagram uh, TV channel. Either way, wherever you're out, there's links to find more help. And I have many, many videos on my YouTube channel. I'm getting, trying to get most of them onto the Instagram TV too, because everyone does different things. I hope this helps you. Be aware of your sitting, your sleeping, your standing. One more thing, eat well. Eat well. A lot of food can encourage inflammation. So try not to eat a lot of white processed junk food. Feed your body with good nutrition. Feed your brain with good nutrition and hydrate. Dehydration or even partial, partial dehydration will cause pain, can cause pain and will cause pain. You can have more aches in your hips and stuff, just, just achy and you didn't really ever do anything because you're partially dehydrated. And if you take your body weight, for example, a 200 pound man, divide your body weight in half. So a 200 pound man should have about 100 ounces of water a day. So take your body weight, divide it in half. That's kind of the basic guideline to what you should have. But if you're drinking coffee, sodas, alcohol, you need to drink some more. Exercising, drink a little more. If you have a kidney disease or congenital heart failure or some other issues in that state, you should ask your doctor or nutritionist how much water you should have for your, for your body. You may not follow into the generic one because you have other issues going on. So know your body, know your medical condition, know what you've gone through. If you go take classes, if you go take yoga, you know, go take Pilates, always go up to the instructor and say, you know, 10 years ago, I hurt my back. Or give them an update of what you are so they can, if they're like me, They'll say during class, but if you have this going on, do not do this exercise. Because you can't just do any exercise because everybody else is. You need to know your limits and what works for you. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It just means, I know I can't do that. That hurts my back. You don't do it. So be communi communicate with the people you're with. Know your own body. I can't say that enough. If you know your muscles and you know your mechanics and the things I teach in my books and videos and what I've just shared with you today, if you understand it more and know how it works, say if you're at a gym and you meet a trainer, instantly you'll know, oh, they don't know their stuff, I'm not listening. Or you'll go, oh, they know their stuff, maybe they can help me. It will help you find better care with your knowledge because you'll be able to roll out who really knows how to help you and who doesn't. And that is hugely important. Okay, have a great day. I hope this helps everybody or somebody. And take care of yourself. Be kind to you. Be kind to others. Feed your body well. Feed your brain well. And have a good day. Bye, you guys.